Thank you for your attending this presentation. My name is Yuki Mishimoto. I am Dr. Kel's student in Hokkaido University. And today I talk about collective intentionality. First, I briefly explain the scope and the ideas of my discussion. Today, I talk about joint action. That is the main issue of collective intentionality. In this topic, the central issue is what is we intention. There are various ways to cause the intention in joint action, such as collective intention, group intention, or shared intention. I call them we intention for convenience. On the other hand, I call the personal intention of individuals I intention. Then the problem is the difference between we intention and I intention. About this, my suggestion is to analyze this issue from a linguistic perspective. Traditionally, collective intentionality has been treated as a mental state, but I argue that by analyzing we intention from a perspective of linguistic practice, we can clarify the content of the we intention. This is the meaning of the presentation's title, Linguistic Pragmatism. To that end, I apply inferentialism to this problem. Uh, it is a theory of meaning and intentional states proposed by Robert Brandam. And I using this theory, I'm going to make the contents of we intention explicit as a having special content. Here is the outline of my presentation. First, I'll introduce Gilbert and Bratman's type of we intention. Second, I will explain the idea of inferentialism. Finally, I will analyze we intention from the inferentialism view. In this section, I explain Gilbert and Bradford analysis of we intention. These two authors are known as the big five in social ontology. And the first is Gilbert's idea of joint commitment. We can point out three characteristics on Gilbert's argument. The first is the content of we intention. Gilbert calls it joint commitment. According to Gilbert, the parties share an intention to do A if and only if the parties are jointly committed to intent as a body to do A. In that situation, the parties are jointly committed to emulate to a single body with a certain intention. The second is the relationship between the participants. According to Gilbert, when the parties are jointly committed in some way, each party is obligated to act as appropriate way. For example, when we girl who work together, we are obligated to work at an appropriate speed and distance. Gilbert thinks that this normative constraints is the future of we intention. The third is the subject of we intention. Gilbert argues that in the joint action, the subject is a group. This is the issues of group agency. This idea is interesting but I do not deal with this topic today. I focus on the content and relationship of the intention. Next, Bratman's idea of shared intention. Bratman denies Gilbert's view. According to Bratman, the content of we intention is shared intention, but Bratman does not consider shared intention as something special like a joint commitment. According to him, joint action is a complex activity constituting of an individual's intentions and beliefs. 
things like this. Um, but the conditions he presents for shared intention are long and complex. And this is a simple sketch. Uh, simply put, uh, for example, when a party goes for a walk, there must be an intention to walk, an intention about its subplants, and a belief about the other party. Those intentions and beliefs are not special. Next is the relationship. In joint action, there must be interdependence, common knowledge of each element, and the connection of each element and actual joint action. There is a close relationship between the agents, but there is no normative constraint. Bratman considers we intention to be non-normative. According to him, normative constraints may reinforce joint action, as in the case of promises, but it is not an essential feature of we intention. Thus, there are two types of we intention. Gilbert considers joint commitment as something special, different from I intention, and it involves normative constraints. But Bratman does not consider his shared intention to be special, nor does he recognize the need for normative constraints, now, which is the proper explanation. I make this point clear from the perspective of inferentialism. In this section, I introduce the idea of inferentialism. This is the book making it explicit, written by Robert Brandam. I will explain the idea of this book to the extent necessary for the current discussion. Inferentialism considers intentional states from the viewpoint of linguistic practice. Brandon and Sam Rosses of that inferentialism should be adapted in the analysis of intentional states. According to those claims, there are some philosophical arguments that one should not think of the intentional state as the mental state. But I will not elaborate on that. Instead, I will show the consequences of applying inferentialism to the analysis of we intention. According to the classifications so far, the, uh, the characteristic of inferentialism is that it starts from relationships. As we have already seen, the analysis of we intention starts with the content and it goes to the relationship. But inferentialism starts with relationships. Then in inferentialism, the relationships we are in are linguistic and normative. First, according to Brandam, we are rational agents. Brandam says, being rational is being subject to the authority of reasons. Then, what is the relationship that rational beings are in? Basic relationships are linguistic. According to Brandon, we, are, uh, we have the capacity to understand and use languages and concepts. In particular, we can engage in linguistic practices in which we are giving and asking for reasons. For example, Human beings can claim that's red in the lettuces. Moreover, when others ask for reasons for that claim, human beings can give reasons for their claims. For example, I said that's white because there was a fire. On the other hand, the pilot also can see something red and say that's red. But the pilot can't justify the claim and can't ask the reason why others claim so. In this respect, inferentialism is rationalism based on linguistic practice. And the linguistic relationship is the relationship in which rational beings are always in. 
Furthermore, language is essentially normative because the use of language essentially includes assessments of speech and actions as correct or incorrect, appropriate or inappropriate. So the basic relationship is linguistic and normative. Then what is the content? According to Brandon, the content of a sentence is explained by the inferential role of the sentence. So his idea is a kind of use theory of meaning. And as I said, language is essentially normative. According to Brandon, there are two types of appropriateness. Uh, they are is described and uh, they are described from the idea of commitment and entitlement. That is, doing what one is committed to do is appropriate in one sense, and doing what one is entitled to do is appropriate in another sense. But what is a commitment and an entitlement? Um, commitment is the responsibility involved in asserting. For example, if I claim that word, I undertake or acknowledge a justificatory responsibility for what I claimed. And in asserting that sentence, I license further assertions for others, such that this is not a rule. Then the content of the sentence is determined by the influential law of such practice. In the next section, I apply this idea to the analysis of reinvention. First, we can see the content of I intend, that is, the content of I intention. According to Brandon, the content of the I intend is an acknowledgement of a practical commitment made by I. He says, Acknowledgement of a practical commitment is the deontic attitude that corresponds to forming an intention, what is expressed by a sentence of the form I shall blah blah blah. Based on this point, we can clarify the contents of we intention by comparing the use of we intent with the use of I intent. First, Consider a Bratman types of we intention. Bratman does not acknowledge that we intention has a special role. His idea of shared intention consists of private intentions and beliefs. This idea corresponds to a situation where everyone in the group acknowledges their own commitment. In other words, it's a situation where every member claims I intend like this. In this case, all members who recognize this situation will have an entitlement to claim we intend. In this case, we intend has a role of omitting the sum of I intend. That is, we can use we intend instead of summing up all I intend. But in this case, we intend has no special role because we can replace all we intend with the sum of I intend. The shorthand is useful but doesn't essentially make a difference. This would be equivalent to the Bratman type of we intention. Next, um, Gilbert's type of we intention. Unlike Bratman, Gilbert does not require explicit commitment from all members. This means that it is possible that we can use we intend even if everyone has not explicitly expressed their own commitment. For example, consider a situation where someone in the group claims we intend that blah 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 to another group. In this case, he or she claims we intend on behalf of a group. This type of use of we intend 
will be found in situations where an organization expresses its intention to another organization. Also, we can think of situations where someone claims we intend to their groups. For example, a football team member will use this type of we them to confirm their strategy by themselves. These two patterns of we intend shows that the use of we intend is useful in making implicit group commitments explicit. In other words, there need be no correlative, correlative personal intentions in the use of we intention. Gilbert called this condition the disjunction criterion. Furthermore, if someone in the group claims we intend that blah blah blah, other members will get the entitlement to refute it. That is, other members can claim, no, we are not committed to doing that. But if there is no objection, other members will be con counted as acknowledging a com a claimed commitment. In this case, an acknowledged commitment will include some obligation. For example, the acknowledged commitment, we go for a walk together, will entail the obligation to walk at an appropriate speed and distance. This means this type of we intend will entail that each party is obligated to act as appropriate way. Gilbert calls this the obligation criterion. Furthermore, in that situation, if a group member wants to be released from participating in it, the concurrence of parties is required. In other words, a member who wants to be released from claimed commitment he or she needs to be entitled to leave from it. Gilbert called this the concurrence criterion. But if a member leaves without concurrence, other members will be entitled to blame it. Conclusion. In these features of Gilbert's argument, we can find a special role in the use of we intend. Its inference role is to make implicit group commitments explicit. And the use of we intend gives members some normative constraints. As we have seen as the concurrent criterion and the obligation criterion. These roles cannot be found in the use of I intend. On the other hand, we have confirmed that the use of certain patterns of we intend is equivalent to Bradman's shared intention. Bradman's type of use of we intend is the sum of I intend. Finally, as we have seen so far, I have clarified the content and relationship of we intention from the perspective of we inferentialism. We can find some special laws of we intend by considering it from the perspective of linguistic practice, not the state of mind. I think this linguistic analysis is useful not only for we intention, but also for collective intentionality and other applied areas. Of course, there are also non-verbal elements in joint action such as body alignment in dance and words. I think other explanations may be required for this point, but I think that language is not just a tool for express something, but a special condition for defining what we are. But as Brandon says, the sort of things we are depends on what we take ourselves to be. One characteristic way we develop and make ourselves into what we are is by expressing, exploring, and clarifying our understanding of what we are. 
Thank you for your blessing.